Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for being here today. Uh, today we have another info session for our, uh, you know, programs in LATAM Startups. My name is Miriam Lazarte. I'm the CEO of LATAM Startups. And I would like to thank you all for, uh, you know, being here today and participate in this info session. We are also live streaming in Facebook. So hopefully, you know, our uh, other participants are going to be there looking at the information that we are passing today uh, about, you know, our programs. So I love to uh, always uh, do this info session by, you know, going through the programs and, uh, you know, our website in particular, because that will give you an idea of how to navigate our website and how we are actually, um, you know, managing the programs inside. So the first part that you see here is the startup visa program. And, you know, we have another link for our programs in which you are going to, again, find information about the startup visa program. The startup visa program is the program that is probably the most, uh, you know, um, uh, is the most popular program that we have. So I'm going to start with this program because people usually have a lot of questions in this program. So first of all, uh, we are a designated organization for the Estado Visa program from the federal government. That means that, you know, we are one of the entities that can give a letter of support to startups that are becoming a part of the Estado Visa program. What means to give a letter of support? It means that, you know, co-founders, up to five co-founders of one startup can potentially get into permanent residence and work permits to bring their companies to Canada. This is not an easy program, I have to say. Uh, it comes with some challenges. And this, this is why, you know, many times we do these info sessions to make sure people understand what they, they are getting into. Uh, the first thing is that we don't have a direct application to the Startup Visa program. And the reason why is because, uh, you know, it requires a lot of validation. The government wants to see really that the companies are, uh, you know, coming with a technology company, knowing ideation, is a technology company that probably already have some traction, minimum have an MVP, especially if you are in health tech or clean tech or green tech, you know, technologies that have long commercialization cycles, MVP is acceptable. For other type of, uh, you know, technology companies, we require to see some traction and we require to have some validation in the program. It's also important for you to understand that, uh, you know, in regards of the layer of support, uh, once the startups enter to the program and they actually get to, uh, you know, the phase three uh, program acceleration program and you get the letter of support by then, uh, you know, the letter of support is what you hear is, is a letter that supports your case, but it cannot make um, visa to show up just because of the letter of support. It has some oral requirements and it's important for you to understand that no designated organization from the government can guarantee you a permanent residence visa through that program. It's just the government, the one that gives, you know, uh, visas, and it will depend on the case presented. Being said that, our obligation and mandatory uh, requirements with the government is to make sure that you have a scalable business and that you have what it takes, you know, to bring uh, business to Canada in particular, you know, to enter to the North American market and some other global programs. And we are very excited many times to work with startups because uh, we have had really good cases. Um, in portfolio, we have two unicorns that we always love to talk about. Uh, they are, you know, technology companies that came from emerging markets. And, you know, we know that it's possible uh, for our startups to reach those kind of levels. So being said that, you know, in, in summarizing here, the Startup Visa program, requires, you know, some uh, criteria. You can see the criteria in our website, you know, in particular, you are going to see that startups required to enter to phase one and phase two in order to make sure that we have that validation that requires from the government and also to make sure that we are going to be able to work with you uh, during phase three. Uh, when we refer to financial stability, is when uh, you know um, companies coming here require to have uh, you know some funding for the first year of operation, uh, in particular because there is no other funding available, no investment available at least the first year, and it's sometimes very challenging for them to get the first customer in the first year in Canada or the states. 
Uh, we require the company by then to be incorporated uh, to have some intellectual property strategy. This is another point that, uh, you know, startups get a little bit confused. Uh, you know, intellectual property doesn't mean necessarily that you need to have your patents available or your copyrights available. It means that, uh, you know, we require to have a, a strategy that you can actually claim, uh, you know, patents or you can claim um, copyrights. Uh, and what is trademarks is not really something that, that is super strong for a startup visa program. So it will be either copyrights or patents that you can claim over the time. And of course, you know, having business plans completed, you know, uh, the economic impact of your company in Canada. And, uh, you know, we have the cost of the program here. And what is that, you know, we are going to deliver for you uh, during this time? Uh, we have been very excited also to see that, you know, the government of Canada is supporting uh, this program, uh, you know, in our uh, accelerator um, by, you know, giving some funding to us to hire for juicy fractional executives and have some market experimenters and some other mentors uh, from, uh, you know, from our circle that can help really to uh, you know, push the company to the sales traction that we need to see and also funding traction that we need to see uh, going forward. Uh, I can speak about this Radiation Plus program, which is an extra program that startups have, uh, you know, after finishing phase three. This is a free program that uh, all our startups in the acceleration uh, programs have accessible, uh, you know, so you can actually apply to this one. You don't need to pay for this one once you finish phase three. And this is another six months to help you to do better in sales and funding also. So it, it will give an extra push uh, to the company. So I, if anyone here in this room has any questions about the Stata Visa uh, you know, uh, program, uh, if you have uh, you know, any particular uh, questions in regards of criteria, just let, it, let me know. You can put in the chat or open your microphone. Uh, in the meantime, I'm going to be speaking about the other programs that you see also in LATAM Startups. So the other programs that you see here and the one that is connected with the Startup Visa program is actually the Startups program. It's the three-phase program that we uh, design uh, for international startups to come to Canada. We actually have right now, uh, you know, applications open for the phase one market validation program. Uh, this is the first program we are going to have in 2023, uh, you know, in February. So these uh, applications are closing in December 16th. So if you have questions about this particular program, please let me know. But this is basically a startup visa path. So, uh, you know, the, the companies that ended up in a startup visa program start with phase one. Uh, one of the most common questions I get about this program is that, uh, you know, if people require to enter to phase one, if they can skip going to phase two, unfortunately, you cannot skip going to phase, uh, phase one, uh, just because we require that, you know, validation of your assumptions about the Canadian market and the American market, uh, you know, in particular. Um, we offer different uh, workshops and information that will help you to validate those assumptions and make sure that you have a plan by by the time that you come into phase two. Uh, so companies that enter to phase one, they normally will have a plan after one month of the program. Uh, they will present that plan to us and they will decide whether or not this is a good time to enter into phase two. Um, many times, most of the time is the company that decides, you know, this is a good step. Um, sometimes it, it will be very uh, unusual is when we tell them, hey, uh, you know, this is not a good time for you to enter into uh, the market entry program, maybe because there is a financial risk, maybe because we see that, you know, competitors are going to be really hard on them uh, and we don't want any company coming, you know, to kind of be broken, you know, in the first year. So we want to make sure that, you know, what you are bringing to the table here is going to be something doable in Canada the first year, and that is realistic as well. Uh, you know, this is not, again, an easy process for companies to uh, enter to a new market. So we want to make sure that, you know, you are actually doing the right thing here. Um, 
So criteria for this program is very similar to the Servisa program. We are looking for technology companies with intellectual property strategy or some IP that they can claim. Uh, we are looking for those that also are financially stable, you know, that they are not going to put in risk the company by bringing the company to Canada in the first year. Uh, of course, we are always looking for coachable teams, people that can listen to the advisors, people that already have done or created companies in Canada and they have gone through mistakes. And we, wanna, we don't want you to go through the same mistakes that, uh, you know, other people have done. And then, of course, uh, those that are willing to relocate in Canada. Uh, so it's, it's important to have a very good uh, business level, uh, you know, to communicate with our mentors, make sure that, you know, they understand your pain and they understand your plan to come to the country. Uh, every, uh, the cost of the program is the same for all. The program is $2,500 per month. This is just one month. So this is, you know, just one $25,000. And this is up to five co-founders. That, mean that, that means that the cost that you are paying here is actually, you know, per company, not per co-founder. And, uh, you know, also uh, phase two, you know, phase two come for uh, two months. And that's why, you know, you have $5,000 here. Um, after the two months program, you will be entering into an interview with our board of directors that will decide, uh, you know, whether or not uh, you are, you know, ready to enter to phase three, which is a start of visa program. If they decide this is a good time and you have a good company to enter to this program, then, you know, we give the level of support is the first thing that we do. Uh, and then, you know, you continue into six months of acceleration program. Uh, so many times the question is like, when I get my letter of support is once you finish phase two and you get accepted by the board of directors. Some other questions that I may have uh, from audiences in the past is in regards of, you know, um, uh, how many, you know, what is the percentage of acceptance into a visa program? You know, how many companies we have declined in the past? Uh, the percentage is in between 85, 90% of the companies enter to start a visa program once they are in phase two. But of course, we have cases when, you know, teams have not been ready. Uh, there is a big red flag, you know, that the board of directors is putting on the table. And uh, they basically are uh, putting the shoes of, you know, a Canadian officer reviewing an application and they will, uh, you know, there is no hey, there is this problem here that we need to resolve before uh, they actually enter to this program and present a case. Uh, so that's basically what is phase one, phase two, or the, uh, you know, the startup programs that you see here, you know, that is connected with a startup visa program. So I just want to pause for, uh, you know, a few seconds here and ask if anyone has any questions right now about the startup visa or the startup programs. No questions, seems like. Okay, guys, um, there is no questions. I will continue with the other programs. Uh, but just remember that phase one is finishing, and you know, if the deadline when we are closing applications is December 16th for those that are aiming to enter in uh, February next year. And okay, so the next program that I'm going to talk about is the corporate program. The corporate program is a program that imitates a startup visa program. The same, you know, same program offers, you know, like uh, you will see, um, you know, what it what it takes actually to get into uh, in this program is basically the same criteria. <laughs> now, um, the only difference with the startup visa program for the corporate program is that the co-founders of these companies are not aiming to um, immigrate to Canada, or maybe they are taking other ways to immigrate to Canada, or they are building a team in Canada. And, you know, it, it's, it's a different path, let's, let's say. We have companies that they, um, they want to have a shop in North America. They see Canada as a very attractive market to enter, but they are not intending to immigrate or they have resolved, again, uh, their immigration process. Um, so in this case, you know, the program imitates a visa program, 
uh, it takes around six months to be a part of this program. You see here the minimum commitment was initially three months. Um, if you want to get into C fractional executives, you know, and to have mentoring, uh, you know, the minimum commitment will be um, uh, six months. If it's less than that, then, you know, it's not possible for us to give like the C fractional because the C fractional requires to have uh, to work with the company, uh, you know, for at least six months. So uh, our aim is to have the company already incorporated in Canada by the time that they are entering into this program. Uh, they are de developing a project to launch in Canada or North America. So, for example, sometimes people are looking for pilots, uh, you know, with big corporations here. Um, they are looking to, uh, you know, start uh, generating sales for sure, same as the uh, other programs. So is the main reason is the incorporation and the uh, attraction of, uh, you know, customers for their Canadian corporation. Um, any other questions that you may have about this program, you can find it actually in our frequent ask questions. You know, you can uh, take a look of this link and make sure that you understand how the programs work, uh, you know, in regards of what is uh, the difference between a startup visa and corporate program and the other programs that we have. Uh, so if anyone here has any questions about the corporate program, just let me know. Maybe put it in the chat if you want to, uh, or any other question that you may, may pop up, you know, about the first program that I talk about. Now I'm going to go uh, very brief uh, to the other programs that we have here. Uh, so the Newcomer Accelerator program is for those that are already in Canada. Again, this is a program that imitates the Star Visa program. And the main difference for this one is that, uh, you know, co-founders already have a PR or they are new citizens in Canada. Uh, this is a, a, a program that is funded by uh, IRAP, uh, RNC IRAP. For those that are not from Canada, this is a federal institution that funds startups and, uh, you know, uh, accelerators and incubators, and they fund per project. So this is our second year pilot. First year pilot, we have five companies. We ended up with graduating three of them. And then we have a group of 10 that are going to be graduated in March. Um, potentially, we are going to open again applications for this program that will restart in September 2023. So it is no close enough for those that are here that is going to, uh, you know, maybe somebody is interested in the Newcomer Entrepreneur Accelerator Program. Uh, just be a part of our newsletter and you will get notifications when, you know, applications for this program uh, will happen. And finally, you know, boot camps. Um, you will see that we have different type of boot camps coming up. Boot camps sometimes are, you know, very short programs. It's a one week program that sometimes we have. And, and in these cases, you know, the cost is less, the information is, is compressed in, in one week. And then that helps sometimes when companies or co founders can actually come to Canada, to Toronto. And they can visit, you know, certain innovation centers and accelerator uh, acceleration programs, and they can have a better idea of how the ecosystem works. Um, during the pandemic, we have the boot camps online, but right now we have returned with boot camps in person. So I'm pretty sure that uh, you guys, uh, you know, can be uh, probably accessing to some of the boot camps. We are aiming to have four boot camps next year with different entities. It's very specialized and sometimes it depends on the uh, type of um, companies that you may have. Um, Ritu is having a question here. What if one co-founder is a PR in Canada and the other co-founder is outside of Canada, no PR? Which program should we apply instead of Visa or Newcomer Accelerator? Well, that depends, Ritu. Um, is any of the other co-founders aiming to uh, immigrate to Canada? Uh, if I, for sure the co-founder that is here is already here, uh, but the other, yes. Okay, so in this case, you may be looking for a startup visa program, uh, just because you know if you are if you are aiming to immigrate, then you know that will be the program. Although we have a, you know different options, a startup visa is not the only option to immigrate. 
um, is probably the shortest option for permanent residents in compared with other programs that are also, uh, you know, providing permanent residence. Uh, but it's still kind of like a, you have to think about a time frame, you know, for a permanent residence and, uh, you know, work permit. So it all depends. Uh, one thing that you can do to figure out what is going to be the best case for you is that if you have a technology company and you have some of the other requirements, you can probably apply for phase one market validation and you will get there uh, very comprehensive uh, information about what are the type of immigration options that you have as an entrepreneur. And it may be one of those options that is not a startup visa program that can help you. But if it's startup visa program, then you just continue in that program. That's my best advice. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry, this is not Meg, it's Miriam, but I'm entering into the uh, Meg's account. Okay, so those are the program uh, that we have. If you want to see what type of clients we have had in the programs, you can actually enter, uh, you know, to this link. You can open, uh, you know, some of the um, uh, white papers and understand, you know, what type of companies are we having, uh, for example, here in, um, in, in, in between our clients. You know, there are many type of technology companies that, that we have between our clients and understanding, again, no of these, none of these companies are in ideation. They already have self traction in their home countries. A couple of companies like, for example, Co Pocket Clinic or, uh, you know, um, K3 are pre-revenue just because they are in a different sector is health tech or uh, clean tech. Uh, okay, uh, Vital has a question, sorry. Uh, what is your question, Vital? Bimal, sorry. <laughs> uh, hi, Mariam. Uh, yeah, hi. Thank you for explaining the program in detail. Well, yeah, my no question worries. is if there is, if there is a company who is in traction, which means the company is registered outside Canada, mm -hmm. and if the company is validated in a month period, and when we move to the second, you know, the second program and all, how we'll be able to uh, collect the payment from, you know, if just identified some customers or if, if it's a SaaS platform and want to bring some customers on board from Canada market, how we will be able to send up and sell the product in there because it's the detailed registration in that country is particularly mandatory to operate the business even in this six months period, how that could be happened. Okay, so I just want to understand what you're saying is that you uh, want to collect, uh, you know, uh, customers in Canada, how you can legally uh, collect that the, those payments in Canada? Yes, yes. Okay, yes. From, from Canadian customer or international customers? From Canadian customers. From Canadian customers, okay. That's not difficult, Bima. Uh, actually, you know, to incorporate a company in Canada, um, you know, it takes less than 24 hours and can be done online. Now, that's the easy part. It, it costs less than $250, um, <laughs> if you can imagine that. But, um, you know, many times it, it will depend. It depends on what type of program you are applying on. Let's say that you are one of those that want to enter into start a visa program. Then you have to have a legal structure for the startup visa program in your Canadian corporation. For this reason, you know, the cost of legal incorporation will take a little bit more and it will also take a little bit longer. But the longest I've seen is like a three weeks. Now, how that links with the payment option is because once you have a Canadian corporation, you can actually open a bank account. Now, it depends on what type of company you have. You may have some restrictions. Uh, for example, you can see in between the companies that we have here, we have one, um, uh, Rexty. They are a fintech company from Peru. And they collect you know, uh, money from different customers in different parts of the world. And they do basically conversion rate uh, transactions. And this, this is a case where, you know, banks are a little bit more conservative to open bank accounts because of the sector that they are at that has more, more regulation. But it has not been impossible for them to open the bank account. You still have, you know, some, uh, no banks, but you have the, um, uh, the other entities that are also financial entities that can open bank accounts for you. So once you have the incorporation, 
basically you have the opportunity to open a bank account is not a problem. Um, sometimes, you know, companies come here with, um, a, with a work permit and uh, with the work permit, they can just go in person and open the bank account, which takes no more than one hour <laughs> probably to, to open the bank account if you go in person. If you do it online, then, you know, our recommendation is always to hire an accountant and then, you know, go through the process online for, for this particular part. Uh, so, Bimo, well, I just want to make sure, do you, uh, is that the answer that you were looking for? Uh, okay. It's a... Uh, uh... On uh, one hand, you know, it, it has cleared my, but again, I have a question like, yeah. um, if we just, you know, uh, if, if it takes a six months, you know, because if it is mandatory that, you know, the company should be relocated if a company which is exists in US for an year, and if we have some traction with the customers from other countries, and if you want to operate the business, uh, it, it is mandatory to move the headquarters or the, the, the main office in Canada itself? No, no, it's not mandatory. You can have Canada as a second headquarters. Uh, but mm -hmm. one thing that you have to consider is that uh, one, one thing is the process for obtaining the work permit and permanent residence, right? And the other thing is operating the company. Uh, the operation of the company can happen right away. Like it's not like major delays to operate a company. What it takes time is actually getting the work permit. And many, many times what I get is that the co-founders, they want to be here in order to do business, but they don't necessarily need to be here in person in order to do business and collect the customer. Uh, you know, especially during the pandemic was well proved that you didn't need to be here in person to actually collect customers. But if you want to wait for that, then yeah, you have to wait for, you know, the work permit now. Um, for for instead of visa uh, program purposes, there is no necessity for you to move the company. But you know, sometimes the, the government wants to see what is that you are doing with your other company and how you are linking the two companies or not linking at all the two companies. What they want to see is that you have already experience, that you have already kind of some traction, and that history will help with the process. Uh, will understand, the government will understand that you are not new in your business, totally new, you know, because you have experience in your home country and you have traction in your home country. Um, it, that, that's the kind of collection of data they want to see uh, in regards of cases. When you are like a totally new and this is first time you're putting a company, then those cases are the weakest I've seen. Um, and it's, it's more difficult that they are going to give a visa, for example, for those cases. And this is why, you know, we don't receive companies in education. It's precisely because of that. Um, but other than that, there's no obligation whatsoever for you to move the company. Now for all, everyone in the audience, be mindful that the government is looking for a scalable business. Uh, they are not looking for the other 97% of traditional small, medium businesses because that's what we have in Canada uh, all around. So they are looking for those that can be really scalable for those businesses that can grow not just in Canada, but in the States and in many other countries. So that's, uh, that's what I think we have here in between our customers. So. Bima, is that the answer that yeah, you were looking it, for? Yeah, that clear again, you know, thank you. I have one more question. Yeah, Can no go worries. Ahead, please? Yeah. Go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> well, yeah, we have well. time. Don't worry. <laughs> okay. So even if, you know, see, if, if we have a company uh, who has attraction and, you know, just working in Dubai for one year and all, and you just, we are looking a Series B fund or Series C fund to expand the company in North American or Atlantic region, or it, it can be anything. So... If just if we perform well, what would be the benefit we actually get from Canada market apart from the market and the space? Because you know how much amount will government invest, or you know if there is if we just prove ourselves that we are this company is you know running perfectly for one year based on your validation method and all you know what benefit we are because you told that you know you should have come with your money for at least one year and yeah. you know, we will not provide anything. So we are just you know. <laughs> giving you a good business and we are coming with our money and all the things which are running you know so what benefit actually we get from your country your government from your organization 
That, that's a really good question. And thank you for asking that question. Well, there are many benefits, uh, you know, bringing the company to Canada. The first one is, for example, this is something that many people don't know, but the government of Canada has more than 100 grants available. And this is very unusual sometimes for startups to hear, you know, like a, why I'm going to get like a free money from the government to help my business grow. <laughs> you know, uh, those grants are available, for example, to hire people here. For example, when you are building a team here, you will have free money available from the government to hire people. You have money to market research and development and you have money to grow your company internationally. And there are so many other grants available, you know, in the market that you can uh, probably obtain. Um, so JP, you are in the in 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 the audience right now. Can you please copy paste the webinar that we made about a uh, Canada 101? We just finished that one, <laughs> uh, so you guys can obtain that that information. Uh, you know, so the the thing here is that uh, you know, if you have a Canadian corporation and you are growing that Canadian corporation you can obtain those grants and start growing the corporation, which, you know, many times the startups are trying to go to the states to obtain uh, financial support from investors, uh, you know, but at the end of the day, it's a debt, right? You get into a debt with an investor, you, you have to return that money, you have returned way more than that money. Many, many startups here in Canada, they actually obtain grants first, which is free money in the market, and then Secondly, go for investors. So that's one of the main reasons. The second may be reason is the Canadian branding. And this can be sound a little bit silly to all of you here, but many of the companies that we have here, once they become a Canadian corporation, the collateral effect for them is that they are selling better in their home countries with the other company that they have. And of course, they start getting, you know, the gears here on and how they can grow, uh, you know, the Canadian corporation. But that's kind of the second collateral effect is that they start growing exponentially in their countries because they are perceived as a Canadian corporation. Now, the third benefit that I want to point out is that, you know, if you are, as I can see many of the times that companies come to us, they are international companies. They are not just let's say located in Dubai or in India, you know, in other places, but they are growing in the region. They are growing to some other countries. Uh, there is a good help from the government of Canada to grow into those other countries. How is the help? You have the trade commissioner office, which in many other countries is, you have to pay for that. In Canada, you don't pay for trade commissioner service. Uh, you can actually obtain that many times they open doors for you in other countries. So you as a Canadian corporation, you can go to a trade commission and say, I need to be meeting with some clients or I need to be meeting with lawyers or accountants, you know, whatever is happening. And then, uh, you know, they can open the door for you. If you are, for example, going to trade shows or you are, you know, meeting with clients internationally, you also get funding for that part. You know, there is the Canada Export uh, Innovation Fund and many other funds related with that one, where, you know, if you need to go to some other trade shows as the Canadian corporation that many times, you know, again, as a collateral effect, help the, the corporation in your home country, you can actually utilize those funds. And just to give you an idea, one of those funds is $75,000 to attend trade shows and, you know, travel and accommodate internationally. So this is just for, you know, to giving you an idea. And there JP has, you know, posted the last YouTube um, uh, info session that we have about grants, uh, about incorporation and about, uh, you know, immigration. So you guys can see that it's very, very detailed. I have to apologize. It's one hour, 27 minutes because it has the train main components that many times you guys are looking for. So just be mindful about, you know, that you can probably see in that webinar what, what you are interested in, it can be the incorporation part, the immigration part, or the funding part, or maybe the three of them. So Bima, is that uh, answer okay for you? Uh, yes, very well. Thank okay. you very much. And just, you know, that yeah, is thank nice. you, thank you. Thank okay, you. sorry about that. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay guys. I'm going now into uh, the last part of the uh, this webinar here is about events. Um, so we do events all the time. And just for you guys to get an idea, we are projecting next year 
around if you know 50 events locally and internationally <laughs> so if you happen to become a part of one of our virtual or in-person events you will find all that information here uh you know uh, from 2023 we are going to update pretty fast this is going to be our last uh, you know in-person christmas party uh that we are going to have uh in in canada but after that we are going to start with events right away in january and, you know, if you want to learn a little bit more about our team, you know, you have all our team here and who are uh, our board of directors, you know, you can connect with them in LinkedIn, you can connect with us in LinkedIn, uh, you know, ask us for our questions. These are our, our C-fractional executive, business mentors and market experimenters. So you can see their profiles, you can see what their, their expert is, for example, I want to highlight here uh, Diego Sibyls. He's one of the co-founders that passed through phase one up to phase three in our programs and his company become unicorn level, uh, you know, uh, last year uh, or the beginning. It was at the beginning of this year. <laughs> so he was one of our speakers actually this year because he came to us when his company was three, four million in revenue in his home, con home country in 2019 by 2022 he was unicorn level so if you want to see those cases actually you can see also our news uh you know in blog part and you will find out some of the other cases that we have from our startups why they brought the companies here and what they are doing right now in particular some of them are startup visa programs some others are corporate program or the other programs that we have so uh, again, I'm going to maybe uh, open for questions right now. Uh, if anyone has any questions, just please let me know uh, before we finish this webinar that is actually pretty much on time. No questions? Okay, guys, uh, so if there is no questions. I really want to thank you for being here today, for being a part of this webinar. Please remember, Phase one market validation program is closing applications next week, uh, you know, December 16th for those that are aiming for uh, in, entering into in February. Uh, the other programs are basically, you know, depending corporate program is enrolling basis and NIA program will be until next year, summertime that we open applications. So thank you very, very much for being here today. You can email us to contact at latamstartups.org. Uh, for any uh, particular questions. So thank you and have a wonderful day.